World War I began in the 1900s when Austria, hungry for some land, took over Bosnia. Austria-Hungary taking over Bosnia was an Avengers level threat. Bosnia hated being taken over by Austria-Hungary. This sucks, said the Bosnians. This really sucks. Many Bosnians wanted independence from Austria-Hungary. But how does this lead to World War I? Well, dear kind sir, keep watching and answer that cheeky little question for you. In 1914, some Bosnian teenage hipsters had enough of living in Austria-Hungary, so the teens had a little conversation over how they were going to kick Austria-Hungary out of Bosnia. Hello! Hello! How are we going to kick Austria-Hungary out of Bosnia? Why don't we scare the Austrians out of Bosnia by assassinating Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand? Is the assassins wanted to assassinate the Austrian Archduke, as they hoped his assassination would lead to a massive political crisis in Austria-Hungary, leaving Bosnia free to declare independence. So on the 28th of June, 1914, the date was set. The Archduke was gonna... DIE! Hopefully this harmless prank won't backfire and cause a world war. The assassins took up places along the road the Archduke was on, ready to show the Austrians who's boss. But it turned out, high school dropouts don't make very good assassins. When the Archduke went past, the first assassin didn't even do anything. The second assassin forgot which weapon he was supposed to be using, so he didn't do anything either. The third assassin at least actually had a go at killing Franz Ferdinand and threw a bomb at him, but he missed. So after that embarrassing attempt, the assassin tried committing suicide by jumping into the deep river. But the river was only four inches deep. He tried to kill himself by jumping into a puddle, so he just got his feet a bit wet. The Archduke was surprisingly a little bit shaken after almost getting blown up by a terrorist, but other than that, he was alright, so he kept going. This proved to be a big mistake. The driver, probably drunk and absolutely smashed, too many beers, accidentally took a wrong turn in the road, and by sheer coincidence ran into one of the failed assassins, who may have been just chilling eating a sandwich when he casually pulled out his gun and shot the Archduke. Now you may be wondering, how does a drunk driver in the sandwich start a world war? Oh dear kind sir! Keep watching and answer that cheeky little question for you. Austria-Hungary was furious that their Archduke was a teeny bit dead. They thought Serbia was the imposter behind the assassination. They could feel it in their balls. The Austrian-Hungarian Emperor, believing Serbia was behind the assassination, wanted to declare war on Serbia. He was like, what tomfoolery is this? Some random bloke got shot. I'm gonna start a war over this. My lords, you silly goose. We can't just start World War One and kill 20 million people because some random bloke got shot. Yeah, we can. No, we can't. Yeah, we can. No, we can't. Yeah, we can. No, we can't. No, can. Yes, we can. Austria was hungry for war with Serbia. So Austria Hungary went up to Serbia and was like, Serbia, you big meanie, you just assassinated my Archduke. No, I didn't. Yes, you did! So after Austria Hungary sent a list of impossible demands to Serbia of the assassination, and Serbia rejected them, Austria Hungary declared war, starting World War I. Now sadly, a drunk driver in the sandwich wasn't exactly the reason World War I broke out. World War I was pretty much inevitable by 1914 anyway. All the European countries hated each other to bits and wanted to beat each other up. It was think all the various powers would at least try and prevent a world war, but nah. Germany, who was besties with Austria-Hungary, immediately joined the war, which is pretty scary for Serbia, as the Germans have balls of steel. Russia rushed in, and because Russia would never give Serbia up, never let Serbia down, or run around and desert Serbia, Russia joined the war too. Russia's besties Montenegro and France, wanting to be part of this new hot World War One trend, joined the war too. Britain and the United States also continued to join the war, but then they decided not to, for now. World War One has now officially started, and both sides started to take this war very seriously. Many people across the world especially teenagers, got really excited over the prospect of war, and they wanted to join the war with their friends to escape their boring school lives. Hey, little Timmy, little Timmy, little Timmy! What? Little Timmy! What? What do you want? Have you heard about this new hot world war that's just broken out? Yeah. I'm gonna sign up. Yeah. Now that the World War 1 trend has been hyped up enough, it was now ready to officially start. Austria-Hungary had already been attacking Serbia, but Germany made the first major move of the war. Germany was such a hardcore sweat, they had written their war plan of how to win World War 1 all the way back in 1905. I told you the Germans had balls of steel. Germany's war plan was called... The Schaeflin Plan! Gosh, I sound like Hitler. <laughs> 
for Schaeflin plan! It was very simple. Germany didn't want to fight a war on two fronts, so the plan was, Germany would surprise attack France and speed run them in eight weeks while Russia was getting ready, before Germany focuses all their attention on Russia and beats them up too. However, there was a problem with this plan. Germany had to invade France quickly, and that seemed nearly impossible, so after some serious thinking between various German military leaders, some German bloke was probably like, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Guys, I know what you need to do to win the war! What's that? Violate Belgium. You, you, you told me to literally violate Belgium. Right? No, I plan to literally violate Belgium. But Belgium isn't even in the war. Yeah, but the French border is really fortified. So if we send the troops through undefended Belgium, we can quickly get through the undefended northern France and get the quick easy win. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this German accent. The more Germany thought about this idea, the more Germany realised Belgium was like puberty, something they had to go through. So the Germans crossed into Belgium thinking they had won, but then the plot twist, greater than the I am your father plot twist, the British Empire showed up. Oh gosh, here we go again. Britain was already pretty chummy with Belgium, so when Germany started crossing into neutral Belgium, in my breast British accent possible, Britain was like, WHAT DO YOU THINK YOU DO IN GERMANY? GET OUT OF BELGIUM YOU FLIPPING MUPPET! <laughs> that was meant to be my attempt at a British accent. Oh wait, I am British. I don't even know why I did that. Despite Britain's entry into the war, Germany was moving through France faster than fast, quicker than quick, and by the 6th of September, the German First Army was only 48 kilometers away from the French capital, Paris. Germany was now only a single day away from taking over Paris. If the Germans actually managed to take over Paris, Britain and France would surrender, meaning Germany would actually win World War I in just four weeks. Sounds sweet. France was starting to really wet the pants, and they were fearing a complete invasion. Only a month into World War I, and anyone would be mistaken by this point to think Germany was going to actually win World War I. Oh no! The Allies had to do something quickly, or they were going to lose the war. Germany was still only a day away from winning World War I in France, and Germany was ready to claim that glory. The Allies were under a lot of pressure, they were pooping their pants, so at the last minute, the Allies had to resort to the last option available. The Allies launched a massive last minute counterattack against the Germans at the Battle of the Marne. This battle was a big deal. If Germany won this battle, Germany would probably win World War I. If the Allies won the battle, and the Allies would get a second chance. Spoiler alert, the Allies won and the Germans in fear ran away. Phew. The Germans had lost their chance to get that quick easy victory royale, but now the Germans were worried that the Allies were going to push them all the way back to Berlin, but Germany was not going to let that happen. They started digging trenches into the ground to protect themselves from the enemy firepower. The British and French soon saw what the Germans were doing and copied them. Soon the Allies in Germany had built a whole trench system stretching from the sea to Switzerland, and now everyone on the Western Front was stuck in the stalemate. This was the birth of trench warfare. What's trench warfare? Trench warfare involves trenches, that probably isn't breaking news to anyone, filled with soldiers all shooting at each other with a no man's land in the middle. Life in the trenches was not the best. I mean, if you enjoy eating your own flea ridden shoes, getting severe PTSD, or waiting around in your own pee, Life's great, but if for whatever reason that isn't your cup of tea, life's pretty rubbish. Now contrary to popular belief, trenches were actually safe. You weren't actually in much danger in the trench itself. But things got really dangerous though, when you were ordered to go over the top of the trench to charge at the enemy machine guns. Why? So you could override the enemy trench to gain a couple of metres of land. I'm not even kidding when I say literally millions upon millions of people would die just for a couple of metres of land. It was brutal. Trench warfare now meant that territorial gains made in the war were extremely minor. And what made it even worse was that the generals really didn't do much to solve the problem. They would constantly just use the same useless strategy of sending millions upon millions of men over the top of the trench to die. And this wasn't even that long ago. To give you an idea of how bad it was, this was how an average meeting went between generals during the war. Hello Gertrude. Hello Big Bertha. Gosh, I can't believe my name's Big Bertha. Sexiest name ever. Anyway, look Gertrude, I'm a bit worried. Why Big Bertha? Why are you worried? The Germans have launched a massive attack against us, and get this, they've taken over an entire one metre of land off us. What's in the Kentucky Fried Kerfuffle? A whole metre? I know, and only 5 million Germans died for taking that single metre of land off us as well. Only 5 million people died to take over one metre of land. What are we going to do then? We can't let the Germans take over an entire metre of land off us and let them get away with it. We're going to have to use one of our strategies. We use strategies? Of course we do. Now what can we do? Hmm. Hey, I've got a totally original never done before idea. Why don't we just send another million soldiers over the top of the trench to their deaths? 
Actually, you know what? Now I think about it, I never thought of that. So original. The Germans won't know what's hit them, especially considering we've only done the same strategy 25 times in a row already. Yeah, it's genius, isn't it? Sure, millions will die a slow, painful death, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Trench warfare started to make everything in this war just absolutely ridiculous. So now because both sides were stuck in the trench stalemate, everyone having common sense decided that the logical decision now was to just end the war and save millions of lives. Nah, <laughs> I'm only kidding. They just wanted to win. Both sides instead, stuck in the trench stalemate, started to come up with ideas on how to break the trench stalemate and win the war. The first idea they came up with was mustard gas, where you would lob a load of gas into the enemy trench and watch everyone die. It was really tragic and caused many painful deaths. The best way to survive a gas attack was to pee on your handkerchief and shove it over your face and give it a cheeky sniff. <laughs> Gas was so horrific in World War I, Adolf, you know, the famous painter, banned gas in World War II because of his awful experience with it in World War I. I researched Adolf a lot for this video, not to like agree with him or anything, but just because I spent 80 hours making this video, so I was just curious to see what he's up to. The second idea they came up with was the explosive boomerang. Perfect, sounds like a great idea, until you throw it at an enemy in battle, and it comes back to you. What I'm trying to say is most of the strategies that they came up with to break the stalemate were absolute pants. By the way, if you don't subscribe to this channel within the next 5 seconds, this guy will come to your house, he knows where you live. I'm warning you, subscribe! Both sides still wanted to win the war quickly, so both sides started looking around the globe to see how the rest of the world could help with the war. Britain and the gang attacked German colonies in Africa, and the European countries conscripted men from all across their massive empires to fight. Britain also brought their best in Japan into the war when they were like, Yo Japan, could you join the war and take these islands run by Germany? I would do it myself, but I'm kinda busy killing people. You know, the usual, sure thing. I just want to remind you, Britain asked Japan to colonise some islands in Southeast Asia because a Bosnian teenager shot an Austrian. History is just strange. Italy also stabbed Germany in the back and joined the Allies too. So now the Allies friends are Italy and Japan. Wow, that aged well. Germany did not like the look of all these Allies joining the Allies. Germany was like, oh no! This really sucks. So Germany became chummy with the Ottomans, and they started attacking the Russians in Persia. This scared Britain. So Winston Churchill tried invading the Ottomans at Gallipoli, and failed, and also died. The Germans also became chummy with Bulgaria, and they joined the war too, helping Austria-Hungary invade Serbia, Montenegro, and Albania at the same time. Ouch. It was now 1917, and the war was still not making much progress. However, something massive would happen in 1917, an event so big, it would change the war forever. An event so big, it would change human history forever. An event so big, it was looking again like Germany was going to win World War One once and for all. But what is this massive event you may be wondering? Well dear kind sir, let me gladly answer that for you. The major event that happened in 1917 was the Russian Revolution. What's the Russian Revolution? Well, the Russian Revolution was an event that surprisingly took place in Russia, where a bunch of tired, hungry, and starving peasants held a revolution in Russia because they thought Russia was being run by a crazy, creepy wizard man who smelt like a goat called Ra Ra Rasputin, along with Tsar Nicholas II and his German wife. German wife! The Germans were the enemies. So they ended up getting replaced with your boy Lenin, a communist who wanted to transform Mother Russia into the Soviet Union. Lenin didn't give two shenanigans about World War One, so he pulled out the war. Russia leaving World War One was devastating news for Britain and France. Before, the Germans had to fight their enemies on two fronts. But now Russia's left the war, Germany and the gang could get all their troops from Russia and completely focus on France. It was looking again like it was all over for the Allies. Germany was going to win World War One. The Germans started the spring offensive and they ferociously pushed through the British and French defences. Again and again and again, each time getting closer and closer to the capital city, Paris. It was looking again like another German victory. But just as it looked like Germany was going to win again, things quickly went very wrong. By now, the German army was exhausted launching all these offensives against the Allies, and the German soldiers were all like, I'm a riot. So the Germans rioted. To make it even worse for Germany, America arrived. Oh gosh, here we go again. America had joined the war because Germany had sent a letter to Mexico saying, Yo, Mexico, plus invade America. And America reading this letter was like, what? The President Woodrow Wilson had just won re-election using the slogan, he kept you out of war. Now only four months after you made that slogan, he joined the war. The Americans held the British and French forces as they launched their own massive counter-offensive against the Germans, which ended up forcing Germany and all the gang to surrender on the 11th of November 1918. 
Turns out the Germans may not have balls of steel after all. Then there was a meeting between the winners of World War 1 where the winners punished Germany severely. And after that, the world was at peace. There will never be a major war ever again.